What the? Huh? Oh my god. Welcome back to Night in the Woods. Last time we played, we tried to dance. We did dance, technically, at a party. May had fun with that. B didn't have fun with some of the other things that happened at the party, but we were able to talk about it. And being able to have open and honest communication helps a great deal with pretty much every relationship we can have. But we didn't have a dream! Which is like the first. I don't want to say ever, but that's very unusual. Oh, this is a different away message. Uh, come pick your fight. Give arrows flight. You mess with me, you mess with all of us. Going to see blank tones next week. I'm assuming that's a band. Take it. Snack falconing. Work, work, work. Till I die, die, die. I don't. Okay. Hello, May. Pickaxe. Pickaxe it at me. I like it. You know the drill. You know the drill. Is that is that a pun? I like that. <laughs> I would love to have the charcoal as like a ringtone. That sounds amazing. Jeez. Feels like it's been years since I got back and saw this again. I can see that. I also feel like sometimes we have those photos in our house that have been up there for years. And whenever something's been on the wall for years, it's just like it's normal for us. We don't process it as much. It's just it's there. It's like the wall itself. It's it exists. But then if we've been gone for a while, it's not like the same because it inherently is new again because we've been gone. Hey, bird. Things are like really intense right now. Pray to your bird gods for my soul, bird. Would a bird god be the same as the cat god that we saw? That doesn't feel right. Hi, mom. Good morning. There's my little sunshine daisy. Are you feeling any better from the other day? May looks pissed. I feel like the more we have conversations with mom and mom like asks how we're doing, the more May is pissed. And I don't think that's because May doesn't like talking with her mom. I just feel like that's a reflection on our Progressing impending doom? Ugh. Sleeping a lot, but feeling worse? Yeah, I, 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 that that's a better way to put it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna make you an appointment with Dr. Hank. That's what I was wondering, too. Like, it's more about this question of. Uh, May doesn't talk about Dr. Hank as though she necessarily likes him. She doesn't talk about him. She hasn't talked about him necessarily at all, besides, like, oh, he told me to repress my emotions, which isn't great. But she doesn't talk about as how she doesn't talk about him as though she resents him. But she doesn't talk him as a, about him as though she likes him. So I guess ambivalence. So to me, this begs the question of at what point is a like a, a, a mediocre doctor or a doctor we don't like? At what point does that feel better than no doctor at all? I think that's a very subjective question. We're all probably going to have answers for that. And I think that this probably... Probably comes up a lot in small towns where, again, sometimes it's this feeling of, oh, they might know a lot of the people that we're around. Or they may not be, like, a specialist. That's probably a question that we face a lot of. When is... When is somebody who's not an expert or somebody that I don't necessarily like, when is that better than nobody at all? Oh, geez, mom, it's fine. It is very much not fine, hun. Because even May isn't like, oh, yeah, totally. That'll be super helpful. She doesn't see the, the advantage of going to seek help with this doctor. And maybe that's because she hasn't had a good experience with therapists or doctors, which is Unfortunately, something that can happen. And if we haven't had a good experience with something, we're reluctant to try it again. I mean, this is how it works with everything. If I try a drink, if I try food and it wasn't good, I'm not going to want to try it again. And the same goes with therapy. The same goes with doctors. If it wasn't good before, why, why, why would I do it again? Why would I kind of like subject myself to that? And it's hard to see that maybe we can have another good experience, especially if we've had potentially multiple bad experiences. I am an adult. I can make that decision. When you're here, you're still my baby. 
think that's also a hard thing too. I I think that parents always do kind of see their kids as their child, but then at what point at what point is it really hard to hear that? Because May it doesn't seem to be treating, or May's mom doesn't seem to be treating May like a child, but it's still kind of weird to hear sometimes. <laughs> and I'm making you an appointment, May. Hun, I'm worried about you. I'm okay, mom. Listen, I keep thinking about the money problems and the house. I'm just so sorry, you. We wouldn't be in this situation if I wasn't such a massive screw-up. I just want to fall into a pit and die right now. May, it's okay, really. We'll figure something out. This isn't on you to fix. I'm sorry if I made it seem that way. What's done is done, and we're a family together, regardless. Please stop worrying about it. It's really hard because just because we hear to stop worrying about it doesn't mean that, like, boom, we're instantly done worrying about it. Because if that's all it took, well, then shit, my job would be a hell of a lot easier. Whatever happens, I love you. I need you to know that. You too. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> you sure you don't want to stay home and rest? Nah, I got stuff to do. What is it you have to do? I don't even know, honestly. Oh, hon. Please take it easy. I will. Love you. Love you, too. This might be a bit of a tangent, but... I think we're also kind of seeing... This idea of people around us potentially wanting to help. And... Do we accept their help? Is their help what we consider help? That kind of idea as far as accepting help. Because we have May's mom who offered help. And she her her form of help was, let me make you a doctor's appointment. And May May refused. She didn't refuse in like a a, a rude way. At least I don't think so. But it was kind of this idea of like, no, I appreciate the gesture. But but no. So this idea of if other people feel like we're having a hard time, when do they step in and try to help? And what does that help look like? And is their recommendation or is their version of help the same as our version of help? And even if it is, or even if it's not, I suppose, when do we accept it? Because something that can happen when we're struggling is we have a hard time communicating. We can have a hard time accepting help. We can have a hard time knowing what help to accept. Like all of these things are very hard when we're struggling. I keep the really good prescription headache meds on my nightstand. <laughs> what are the really good prescription meds? I can, like, give you half of one. You're not supposed to do that. Only- I like how my response is, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. And May's like, only half. Mom, you're skimping. Give me the whole thing. Honey, you're, you know- Small? Short? Half would be fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the reason why we're not supposed to give other people meds that are prescribed for us. Is like, in theory, they're prescribed for, like, us. <laughs> for that reason, it's fine, Mom. Okay, let me know if I can be of any help. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> oh, I should check if we can actually talk more. I just... Uh, I just assumed that would be it. I think it's interesting, too, that so much of the time, her mom assumes that this is a a physical thing. Her mom is assuming, because we keep going back to the headaches. Her, it's like, yeah, this is potentially a reflection of our culture, too. We often assume that if something is happening, it's more physical than mental. And I'm not saying this is for sure mental either, but we are more likely to have conversations about physical health and mental health. Because there's so much more stigma about mental health. Kind of like how there's a lot more shame, blame, and guilt about going to a therapist than there is about going to the gym. Granted, the gym can have its own set pair of things of shame, blame, and guilt. But if somebody goes to the gym in our culture, in our society, we're more likely to say, hey, like, good for you. But we don't, uh, we don't always say the same thing about therapy. We can, don't get me wrong, but it's different. It feels like often there's a lot more tendency to be high. There's a lot more tendency to be secretive about therapy because of the stigma. We don't quite have the same about the gym. 
I think that kind of shows how we treat physical health as a very different entity than mental health. And so it, I guess it's just interesting to me how so many people are, are I guess her mom is assuming that it's, it's a headache. And a headache could be an aspect of this. But what about mental health? Oh, God. What do you want? <laughs> that pause. <laughs> it, it feels like it's like, hmm, how do I want to respond to this? Hello to you too, May. Well, I wanted to let you know we ran a test on that arm you guys found a few days back. I don't think you're supposed to just like openly tell people the results of this stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, if I'd be interested is all. Definitely, yeah. You know, if it has to do with murder and mayhem, May is all about it. Murder, mayhem, May. It's all alliteration. It makes sense. Arm belonged to a middle-aged man and medium build. And he was dead when it was removed. Okay. Whoa. That means it doesn't mean anything yet. I just thought you'd like to know. You always liked detective stories when you were a kid. I mean, she does. She does. Now, still, currently. That is a thing that May still likes. Okay, yeah, thanks. The ghost is- this ghost is seriously messed up. Ghost? Oh yeah, this is the first time that we've talked to the aunt about this, like, so openly. Because there was the thing where we, like, saw the ghost. Or, like, whatever the, the- the- whatever that was. The thing that we are calling the ghost, like. But then the aunt was like, come on, we're gonna take you home. And- but we haven't really, like, had a conversation with the aunt about that. To be fair, we haven't had a conversation with the aunt about a great deal of things. Wasn't no ghost involved in this, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, nobody believes me. I get it. It's like May's used to being dismissed. Feels sad. Be careful, May. Strange stuff going on. Yeah, you're telling me. Have a nice evening, May. Isn't it morning? Oh, not if May was sleeping. For most of the day. I feel like if this is one of those, like, choice-based games, like, Telltale games, something like that, every time I interacted with a squirrel, it would be like, squirrel. Getting cold early this year. Don't bode well. Hey, Selmers. Jeez, man, are you sick? Nah? Just tired? Got a headache? How long has this headache been going on? So, the headache is actually happening, but how long has it been going on? Because if this headache has been happening the entire time we've been home, this is like, this is over a week. It's a very long headache or migraine or one of the two. Why are you out running around? I'll get over it. Yeesh. Take it easy, neighbor. Can do. Want to hear a new poem? Nah, maybe another time. Sure. The stars, the stars, like lights on cars, drive across the dark and never park. It's true, they are like that. I got one ready for the longest night. Oh? Longest night, longest night. Night so dark, but stars so bright. Nice. Thanks, I'm feeling festive. So, another thought I had about the headache is... This makes me wonder if potentially this would kind of encourage someone to... do more things. I guess it could also encourage us to fucking stay in bed the whole time. That makes sense and it seems like that's what her mom is saying but if we do end up getting like out and about couldn't that make us just want to do all the things because it's a distraction from the pain you notice anything like weird around here lately weird as in ghost man or missing kids the missing kids one is something that i feel like the town would kind of be aware of because of the missing posters the missing kid posters the missing casey posters i don't think so not recently, at least. That Casey kid last spring. Yeah. But he weren't a kid no more. Maybe someone else, but from another town. I'm sure I'll remember. You know, I asked that, but I didn't expect you to know. I read the paper. Oh. Forecast is thinking snow soon. <sighs> when? Soon. Gonna get cold soon. <laughs> it always kind of feels like how we talk about weather. Soon. Kind of could feel foreboding. Will tunnelfish be always there? Will tunnelfish drain and canal be bare? I would miss the tunnelfish. To have them back would be my wish. Are they gonna drain the tunnel or something? 
No, it's poetry. Okay. I'm just making stuff up. Stop listening to me. <laughs> Please don't listen. <laughs> it's always like their last comment. It's, Please don't listen. I also noticed about the stealing thing that May will steal for the rats. So even though she has the ability to steal, she doesn't steal all the time. And if that could just be a game mechanic. Oh yeah, and we were supposed to tell the pastor today that Bruce is gone. That was like our job for today. We got statues of stern dudes for miles here in Possum Springs. What about like stern gals? Unless dude is like a um, non 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 gender specific term here. I wonder where Bruce has got to. Actually, I know. This is where we tell them. Really? Yeah, he told me not to tell you yesterday. Tell me what, May? That would sound so like ominous. It's kind of like when you get a text with someone that says we have to talk. It's like, oh, Bruce is going home. He. What? Yeah, he's going back home to his kids. I guess they're all waiting for him. Oh, he seemed pretty happy about it. Okay, thanks, May. Are you not happy about this? Was that a real story from Bruce? Oh, that would be heartbreaking if it wasn't. Like, like some kind of platitude to make us all feel better. Thanks for letting me know. I mean, the idea of ignorance is bliss is always a big question, too. Like, is the pastor happier knowing? Or would she rather not? I suppose that depends, too, on what we see as the actual reward for our work. If we feel like our work only matters if, if the reward or what we get out of it is uh, for in this case if the reward is if bruce actually like lived in town or lived in the the basement of the church if that's how we define the reward or when our work is worth it then we're probably going to be disappointed because the the reward never came whereas if the reward is something more vague like planting a seed of I guess I think of this in very therapy type terms, like planting a seed to help people see that like maybe people care. That's a more vague concept, so we can't really measure it very well. But if that's what we see as, as the reward or the point of our efforts, then that happened in this case, because that's what's happening with Bruce. So I think so much of this kind of depends on how we define the reward of our work. Like when is it worth it kind of? Still can't go over here. See, you can't resist coming here. That's God calling you. We could also say that we just wanted to visit our mom. Oh, geez, I'm betting not. God's patient, hun. Like nature. That is such a creepy statement. I find it comforting. I got this creeping dread thing going on, so just ignore me. Okay, hun, can I do anything? Not really. Love you! What is it? I don't know. Purposefully committing this scene to memory. Taking a brain photo? <laughs> yeah, like when I was a kid. Your dad was great with the games to keep you quiet in the car. <laughs> How do I keep a child to be quiet? Especially if it was like, before the time of handheld games. He sure was. I still do it now. Snap. Got your picture. Snap, snap. Got yours too. Love you, sweetie. You too, mom. I'm so worn out. Why don't you go take a nap back in the library room? Oh, wow. I haven't seen the library room in years. It doesn't get a lot of use these days, but it's nice and quiet and peaceful. Okay, I might do that. Door back there is unlocked now, so have at it. I'll be out here. Thanks, mom. No problem, sweetie. Also, I was just there, and it was not fucking unlocked feels like a lie. 
this would feel like a nice warm place to take a nap. Oh, I was like, uh, May? Oh, May looks exhausted. the same notch on his ear. Is this a scene that I have to like press a button to exit out of? I don't want to. So sweet. Is this May's grandfather? I guess it's hard about this too. I, I guess this feels bittersweet because she's not awake to see him. He's there, like watching over. Oh, it fully puts me out of the church. But yeah, I have to press a button next and out of it. Well, time to cause mayhem and madness like our grandfather would want. This is the one who had all those books, right? Hey, can I get up here? Yeah. The apple crate book of books. Has anyone complained? About what? You playing? I don't think anyone cares, honestly. Or they like it. I'm fine either way. Fair. <laughs> Where are those other pinnacles gonna be? You okay? Yeah, I'm like only half here right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just like contradicts what you said before about yes being fine. I'm just tired. Are you sick or something? I don't even know anymore. You should get some cold medicine. Well, just because we're tired doesn't mean that it's a cold. And some crackers and ginger ale. She cares so much that she's like, here are all the things that have helped me in the past, or I've been told are helpful. Like, let me give them all to you. And lay in bed and watch bad movies. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, Doc. Or I feel like that won't fix this one. Yeah, I feel like that won't fix this one. One time I got pneumonia. Fuck. Like, oh, I forget how old she is. 14, 15. Like, she's younger than May. It's, uh, it's really rough to get pneumonia when we're that young. And I didn't go to school anyway. The fuck? Isn't that contagious or something? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> May, you okay? May, you're on a roof like half awake. Please don't fall. May. Oh, sorry. Spaced out there for a second. You should, like, see a doctor. I'll get around to it. Thanks. Uh, no problem. All right. Well, I'll probably see you later. Probably? Nothing certain, I guess. Okay. See ya. So this is the second person who's made a comment about seeing a doctor. So May's kind of spacing out, having a hard time sleeping. So I, I guess if May doesn't want to go to the doctor now, it begs the question of how bad would it be for her to say, yes, it is a good idea for me to go to the doctor. I don't feel like that's a very pleasant question. Well, that's it. Shipping out tomorrow. Can't believe you actually landed the new job. Yep. Moving on to better things. The kid's excited? It feels like this, like their friend is sad about that. Oh yeah, they'll love it. Might take a while. Huh. Well, yep. Yep. Maybe just one more, huh? Yeah, one more. <laughs> Go Smelters! Yep. So this character's been in a 
neck brace the whole time, and it makes me kind of wonder why. So I don't see any other, like, different characters that have popped up that we can talk to. Sounds like it's just the same characters. So I want to check in on Ingus. And then I'm not sure if it's one of those days where we can hang out with B or Greg, or if we're going to investigate more. Angus, my berry friend. So I said I could like take you up to the park. Oh yes, yes, I want to go to the park. You did indeed, I'm so tired. I'm gonna be okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. You up for this park trip? Yes. I'm excited. No, you're May. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, we never get to hang out, that's true. Ghost hunting with Angus. So you think the guy you saw was a ghost? Not a guy, a ghost. But do ghosts have, like, genders still? I guess that's a very philosophical question. Right. Why does no one believe me that it was a ghost? Well, I mean, ghosts don't actually exist. So Angus continues to be very logical. I'm pretty sure they do. Well, I'd need evidence. What counts? A ghost walking up and saying hello. So Angus could see the ghost walk right in front of him a ghost can see a, wa a ghost walk up and say goodbye but if the ghost doesn't say hello does it not count <laughs> and me saying hey i verified that you are a dead person could be a zombie or frankenstein isn't it technically frankenstein's monster okay maybe if they're made of ghostly ghosty stuff ghosty stuff can be our podcast has someone made that happen yet about ghosts <laughs> This episode of Ghosty Stuff brought to you by Donut Wolf. <laughs> Welcome to Ghosty Stuff. I'm May and I saw ghosts and this is Angus who doesn't believe me. This is all like just BuzzFeed Unsolved. Isn't that what that's called? Yeah, that's what that sounds like. I'm Angus and this is May. She's a crazy person. <laughs> hey ghosts, it's your boy, Angus. <laughs> Oh my god. <sighs> nice evening. Yeah, it's all right. My mom used to take us up here to play frisbee. I got hit in the teeth of the frisbee once full speed. Uh, geez. Casey and I were throwing things at each other's heads. That doesn't sound... Okay. Oh. We stopped after the frisbee. I can see why. Posted. Do not feed or touch the bears. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that seems extreme. Or, well, clearly. That seems extreme. I don't know. You can't go to the woods to, like, socialize with the woods. <laughs> Isn't it more that, like, you don't want the wildlife to become dependent on humans to, like, live? I guess. Like the squirrels. <laughs> There's some folks living in cabins up here. You can, uh... Feed and touch them if you want. What, folks? It's a weird old place up here. It's all kinds of weird stuff back up in the park. Old stuff just hanging out in the woods. Sounds ominous. We'll hit my old scout camp on the way up, I think. Busy woods. Okay, better get going before it gets dark. Oh, I guess I would feel better being with the scout with something like this. The music doesn't sound ominous at all, though. It's kind of like adventure. -y. Is this a fireplace? Angus, what is this? You alright? Yeah, I got asthma as all. Well. Oh shit! Now I feel bad. Sorry, you gotta wait for me. No, no. Do you have an inhaler? That's a legit question. Didn't you run cross country back in junior high? Do you have an inhaler? Yeah, but I saved that for emergencies. That's fair. Just want to make sure you have it. Being slow isn't an emergency. Totally fair. I will wait. What is this thing? This is like a lime kiln, I think. Do they actually have kilns just like out and about that people can use? Limes? Kiln. Lime. Limes is like the... uh. Rock. Limes. 
limestone. You like do something with it in there and it becomes this other thing. Like a cocoon. Oh, limestone's weird because it's mostly made of skeletons of sea creatures. I did not know that. From millions of years ago. So like this is all underwater or something at one point. Whoa. Yeah, well, we're in no way. Whoa. I know, right? Like right where we're standing. There were like ancient horrible sea monsters. Creepy and awesome. That's history. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready to go. Nope, I gotta jump. I will wait for you anyways. You can't see me. Okay. There's another kiln? How many kilns do we need? Whew! Need to take a break? I'm okay, I'm okay. No problem. So, if this place is underwater, where'd the water go? Or why aren't there, like, ancient shark boats up here? This sounds more like a May type question. I don't know. There might be, I guess. But not everything becomes a fossil. Why? I don't know. I'm not an expert on any of this. But there were definitely ancient sharks around here. Like that megalodon? Ugh. Weird, because things are so boring nowadays. To think, like, all that crazy stuff was going on here. There's always more weird stuff that happened to find out about later. Okay, I'm ready to go. Cool, cool. Angus and Greg are like just interesting foils of each other. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah. Sorry. Seriously, it's fine. Hang out for a minute. Like, you don't have to apologize for like the physical condition of your body. Okay. I should know all this stuff about, like, ancient sea creature, sea creature rock or whatever. Lime stone. <laughs> I was going to take a class on dinosaurs back at school. What happened? It was all full up. That class fills up fast. Because it's dinosaurs, and dinosaurs are interesting? I bet. I love dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are, like, the most interesting animals. Let's go. I love dinosaurs. Who doesn't? Things were so scary and cool back then. We die in, like, five minutes. <laughs> Oh yeah, ancient creatures would eat us. No problem. Be glad for the millions of years between us. Beard. Time, dude. Time makes most dangerous things less dangerous. Most things, at least. Okay, you ready to roll? Yeah, we're almost to the top. Aren't we also kind of afraid of time, too? Because, like, we don't want to get older and or die. A lot of times. Wow. Wow. My old scout camp used to come up here with my troop like a decade ago. You're the ancient sea monster now. Looks like it. All these like sticks remind me of um, Lion King, the like sea of brambles. Wow, looks like some of the whirly note things came back. What? The what? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, uh, we made these little windmill things and each put an anonymous note in them attached to this little spring-controlled helicopter. Is that what was in the little windmills? That the things just went, like, flying off? And the idea was that when the wind would pick up, the windmill would wind up the helicopter and the note would fly away. Looks like some of them flew back. That's, that's what it is. That's an amazing coincidence. Oh no, that was the idea. Each year we'd read notes left from the year before. I'm going to see if I can find any more. I'm going to hike up here. Been a while. Got one. Oh, so I just have to find the notes and then Angus will chill up up there. Got one. So are these all the ones that I got from before? All the notes that I freed? How would you know, like, that the notes would actually find their way back to that one spot? I think you got them all. From what I can spot, at least. And I got the high vantage point. <laughs> I have the high ground. <laughs> Let's read them. Let's read them. Wait, should we, though? We gotta leave them for the scouts. Oh, it's fine. Anyone up here, or any ones up here wouldn't last the winter anyway. Okay, okay, okay. Let's read one. Okay, here's one. 
Hi, I'm not supposed to write my name. And that's fine, because I am a scout. And that is the only name I need. It's like, this is my identity, and I'm proud of that. Wow, that's intense. It goes on! The scouts give me more than a name. They gave me badges to show my worth. I just want to put out there that something that we earn, whether it be grades or badges or promotions at our work, don't determine our worth. Just putting that out there. Jeez. I would kill for the scouts. Please don't. That's it. Were you all like this? <laughs> Kinda. Sometimes. No. Maybe. <laughs> okay, let's read this here. Read it. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. What? I am super, super gay. Uh -huh, nice! Angus, did you write this one? I, I could have. I think my note is about being strong and good. And gay as hell, apparently. I think my total gayness came through to the discerning reader. It's like it was subtext, not so openly said. Alright, let's read this note. <clears throat> I like shooting arrows. They are cool to shoot. Is this Greg's? Was Greg a scout? In fact, I think we should shoot arrows instead of guns when we're in the army. It has a tactical advantage in that it is silent and also elegant. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> I'm a Angus on this one. I got nothing. Hmm. What? Not much changes. It was Greg. Oh my god, it was Greg. Could just as easily have met our notes from 10 years ago. Yeah. There's like a timelessness about people. Some things just don't stop being what we are. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that was quite the hike. Well, that was a hike. That's what I said. That was a lot easier when I was 11. I mean, a lot of things are a lot easier when we're 11. Also kind of a lot harder, like getting a, a bank loan. We passed, what, three gates on the way up here? I lost count. But it used to be open back then. Hmm. Ready to go? Not far now, just up ahead. I like how they lit all this up. Graves? Graves, huh? Yeah, these were, I forget. They were involved in the Possum Massacre. There's a Possum Massacre. Was that the from the play? Oh, that like labor strike thing. From the tooth thing. Where it was like the miners versus National Guard? Never mind. I don't know what what it was. Happened like back in town a hundred years ago. This is a new event I'm learning about. Why are they up here? Like were they considered not good enough to be back in the regular town cemetery? Or is this an old town cemetery? I think these were some of the bad guys. And some of the miners didn't want them buried in town. Oh, huh. So then I wonder how their families would feel about that. Where it's like, my family member isn't good enough to be buried in town. Almost like, does the stigma of that carry down to, to other generations? There's like a few old graveyards um, up here from like colonial times. Damn, that's old shit. I guess there's one up here somewhere, too. Wow, that's spooky. Eh, just bones. I also noticed Mace is the word spooky a lot. Ancient shark bones! <laughs> See? Nothing left to be scary. There's not going to be a, a janitor statue thing that I'm going to have to keep an eye on. What's there? This perspective going out. I was like, how close are we getting to this edge? Wow, we're up really high and really far out. I can't see town from here. It's south of us, behind whatever ridge that is. So what, are we just supposed to wait here and see if anything happens? Like how May is deferring to Angus. Like, so what are we supposed to do to find a ghost? An Angus perspective is ghosts don't exist. So I, I, what, what do you expect me to say? You tell me, you're the expert, exactly. I guess we'll just wait here and see if anything happens. <laughs> Nice night. Yeah. Back at school, I couldn't see as many stars. That just made me sad. Oh yeah, they're really nice up here. I wish I knew the constellations like you did. 
I mean, you're learning, though. What? You know, all the names and the stories and stuff. I wish. I can never remember them other than... I think that one up there is like a bell or something. No, 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 no. Remember that time we were all at the Longest Night Bonfire and we spotted the constellations together and you told us all about them? That's, that's not a thing that happened. Oh, wow. Maybe it was like a dream or something. So is May... So we have these dreams that are like super surreal, but is May getting some of these dreams mixed up with reality? God, I barely remember now. I wonder what fake constellations and stories you dreamed up. Okay, humor me. I'll find the constellations. You tell me about them. Okay, then. All right, find me some constellations. Wait, are these going to be real ones or fake ones? Does it matter at this point? Just ones I remember. Or dreamed that one time. <laughs> uh, whichever. Remember Mr. Chazikov? Yeah, science teacher. He lives in Underhill and has a telescope on his roof, and I totally saw some stars through it. That's cool. Telescopes are cool. Wish I had a telescope. Okay, let's see. Oh, we just, like, point? Are these all, like, stars that we found before? Go this one. Oh, we have to connect them? Do I have to make it into an actual shade? I like how Angus doesn't really shame, blame, or guilt May for not... Like, for getting some of this stuff confused. It's not like, oh, how could you... How could you, like, do that? Just like, oh, yeah, cool, let's do this. It's a pope. He breathes fire. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Oh, this one is real. Or at least the dude is. Rue Bello. There's a statue of him outside church. Oh, we never went there. Did your family not go to church? Or do you not know your saints at all? That sounds like a way of kind of, like, shaming, blaming, guilting for, like, not knowing this stuff. But if he's if he's not religious, he wouldn't know. Does your family not go to church? Weddings and funerals and longest night, basically. So, like, a, a wedding and funeral type church family. I don't think those first two count. Those are, like, events. My mom works at the church now. I haven't gone, really, since I was, like, 14 or 15. Does she mind? She pretends not to. So what other ones do we have? I got this like W looking one. Ooh, let's just make it like a nah, let's make it W. I wonder how many constellation like combinations there are. Like a boat. <gasps> oh, it's a whale! It's a whale! And it's got like the world on its back. Oh wow, that's sad. Yeah. Or why? Why? Why does it have to carry the whole world? Like, that's really unfair. It's a big burden. Yeah. That is legitimately upsetting. You gotta wonder why people made these up. I mean, like, these specifically. Who saw a whale and was like, needs to be carrying something? I mean, whales are pretty big. They didn't know what the earth was. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't know what the earth was. Yeah, but like, I don't assume everything I don't understand is a whale. <laughs> I don't understand this thing. It's a whale. That's true. You could star. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to assume everything's a whale, though. This is a fun activity with Angus. Okay, that's a bell. And in the middle is this eye. Is this eye looking at you? Okay, that's a. Uh, I I know this one a little from like prog rock album covers. <laughs> I think the world ends when it rings. I think you die when it rings when it's looking at you. Let's go with that one. It's like the eye is important. Well, crap. It's high enough that it's always looking at all of us, right? God damn kind of world ending. Ooh, what are you? Aww, 
it's a cat. He's got arrows sticking out of him. That's not all. And he's chasing a diamond. Oh, I know this one. Don't remember his name. He lived, uh... You remember the stories about the forest god? Yeah. Or no. Yeah, it was in the play that we saw. The janitor was the forest god. My granddad used to tell me Adina stories. Oh, okay, yeah. Anyway, this cat was in there. Liked shiny things, was good at getting through the forest. It's so, like, burglar? It was really good at stealing. It's so, like, Catwoman, if Catwoman was... Not a woman? Oh, wow, yeah, I used to call him Ass Cat when I was little. Well, then he stole a diamond from a king, got arrowed to death. That's the way to say it. But he was slick enough that he jumped out of his body and became immortal or something. Like in the stars. Huh, decent. Extremely decent. We're like way out here, huh? In the park? Yeah, I guess. Spooky. I don't know, it's pretty safe. And the stars are pretty. So you don't believe in ghosts at all? Nah, I don't believe in ghosts or gods or psychic powers or anything like that. Not at all? I mean, there's no evidence for them. And people have really tried. <laughs> Did you ever? Yeah, when I was a kid. Tell me about it. So, um, I don't know how much I have ever told you or how much Greg has told you, but I didn't have the best childhood. So we've learned, we're, ugh. So we are learning more about Angus. I like, I'm assuming his family because there was that little bit before where Greg said his family like was trash. Greg's words, not mine. But there was also like these these days kind of earlier on in the story where Angus was like, I, I'm doing family stuff. And then was kind of like gone. So I'm assuming all this stuff is interconnected. Yeah, I think I heard about that. Why was it bad? Um, my dad didn't like me. Was it because of being gay? And my mom didn't either. And like, um, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. It's like giving the safety. No, it's fine. Um, my dad used to hit me a lot. Oof. And my mom was probably worse. She like wouldn't feed me. Fuck. Which is why I really like cooking now. It's this idea of like, Food, which is like literally something that we need to survive wasn't guaranteed so now that he's an adult making sure that this thing is guaranteed but not only that like making it how he wants like taking back control because as kids we have very little control I mean, and so much of this kind of depends on, like, how we were raised as far as, like, some families let their kids have more control over what they wear, that kind of thing. But in this situation, there would be so much control that, that Angus did not have to, even with basic living stuff. So, trying to take back that control... She'd, like, shove me into the pantry and slam the door really hard. And all the stuff would fall off the shelves on top of me. Ugh. My god, Angus. I didn't know at all. That's awful. She'd lock me in there for, like, a day at a time sometimes. Or open. So I'd, like, try to develop psychic powers. Mm. So I could, like, signal the neighbors... Or unlatch the door. So, like, trying to do all of these things to try to get help. Try to get out of this situation. I think another reason why this kind of stuff is so hard is because it is so hard when we're kids to try to figure out how we feel about this situation. Because oftentimes we still care about this person. Like, we still care about our parents. But then how do we reconcile that we, that we care about this person, but we hate this thing that's happening to us? It's really hard to, like, figure out those things in our head. Didn't work, as you might guess. Did you ever tell anybody? I never did. 
I don't know why. Well, a lot of times we feel like if it's our parents doing this stuff, we don't feel like we can tell anybody. Maybe we feel like we don't like nobody will believe us. But also sometimes we feel like that's just how it is. So why would we tell anyone? Even though it shouldn't be that way. These things should not happen to a child. They shouldn't happen to anybody. After a while, I like started feeling guilty too for some reason. Like this was something like was it something bad I was doing? Like blaming ourselves for for what happened. And that's something that can can come with trauma is we we develop these these negative beliefs, these negative perspectives on the world. And then another hard part about that is sometimes those negative beliefs end up getting applied to situations that that don't have to do with the trauma. And that's an like one kind of way to look at how trauma can get stuck with us. Like being abused. Angus, it's not your fault at all. You were a kid. But we can know these things logically, but that doesn't mean that they sink in emotionally. Oh, don't worry, I know that now. Boy, do I ever. Question, can I go kick all of their asses? Like, I've got experience, I can F some shit up. <clears throat> well, my mom is kind of old now. I uh, still have to visit her sometimes. Have to. I have a brother. He's overseas in the army, and my dad left like 10 years ago. So who knows where he is or if he's even alive. So kind of like who else will take care of the mom kind of a thing. If he is alive, I don't want I don't want to know about it. Angus, I just want to give you a hug forever. I can see that. <laughs> well... I was luckier than a lot of kids. I'm just glad I didn't like... Yeah. Anyway, to your original question. Testing out my psychic abilities in the pantry made me really interested in both paranormal stuff and science. And I joined a skeptic society on the internet and that kind of ruined me on a lot of other supernatural bullshit. And it gave me something to solve. Something you could debunk or, you know... I don't know, it saved me a little bit, I guess. Because when someone does all that stuff to you, it can, like, make you do some bad things to yourself. But anyway, yeah. But anyway, yeah. No ghosts or God. So, like, I feel like if I'd been through that, I'd be more likely to believe in God or something. Do you believe in anything at all? Um, well, so, like, the constellations. I don't believe there's a whale out there. But I believe that the stars exist, and that people put the whale there. Like, I don't know. We're good at drawing lines through the spaces between stars. Like, we're pattern finders, and we'll find patterns. And we, like, really put our hearts and minds into it. And even if we don't mean to. So I believe in a universe that doesn't care, and people who do. Pattern finders. I feel like a lot of people don't think they found God. But, like, God found them. And when they were having bad times like you did. God never did. I was completely alone in the pantry. But a few years later, Greg did. So, like, the stars can stay up there and not give a shit about us. But this whale is pretty cool. You're an extremely good and smart person, Angus. I try. But I'm no more than anyone else. So, like... talking about the different ways that we can see like religion and spirituality when it comes to these hard things in life like do we see it as this this hard thing happened to me and like how can there be some greater being if hard things happen to me or sometimes we can see it as this hard thing happened or we can see it as like this hard thing happened and maybe like spirituality or religion is something that that comforts me through it um so, like, these different perspectives that we can take when it comes to religion and spirituality. Yep. Do neither one of you see the figure behind you? Because that was very distracting to me. Yep. I should come out here more often. <laughs> yeah. Don't look at him. Oh, so, so Angus does see him. Who? There's someone standing behind us. Okay. I also noticed that, that both of these times when we've seen someone, uh, whoever, like, May is with sees them first. Also, it has the same, like, miner's hat type thing on as the shadow that we saw before. It's like a... 
It's like a miner's hat and a raincoat. In the trees. Holy shit. Also, like, wouldn't the shadow be able to hear us? Holy shit. What do they look like? Tall, wearing some kind of weird coat. Like a utility coat or something. Angus is so logical with this. Oh god. That's the ghost. I'm more worried about it being a living person. Super valid. Standing in the woods, staring at us. Oh god, oh god. Well, don't panic. Maybe, like, take some deep breaths, babe. Follow my lead. Hey there. Out for a hike. No response. Nice night. I'm expecting Angus to be like, do you have a, a do you have a thing of gum? Like something super casual. He's not answering. That's a little hostile, right? No, not necessarily. Oh, that's definitely a little hostile. Hey, if it was like a town where cell phones were like super common because apparently there's no reception here. It would be like, use your flashlight on your phone. I know what you did last summer. May, no. I saw you. Maybe being super accusatory is not a good approach. Okay, we're going to run now, but you'd have to run past them. We need to get to the car. Oh, but Angus has asthma. <laughs> yeah, but your asthma. They do have the inhaler, though. Maybe this is an emergency. I got an inhaler. Exactly. The good kind, too. Is there a bad kind of inhaler? No one in heaven or earth can stop me. It's fucking determined. Okay, okay, let's go. Deep breaths. In. Out. <sighs> All right. Arr! You don't... Did you get a look at him? Also... How does this figure just happen to show up at every place that we're going where we are looking for ghosts? Oh, this fast! Like, how do they know? Is this coincidence? Like... Are you okay? You okay, big guy? Yeah, I'll be okay in a few minutes. I'm resilient. Damn right you are. So, that was it. That was the ghost. Or... That was some weirdo who lives out there. They probably get lots of kids throwing parties back there. I mean, the party we went to, where you threw up. Ugh. That wasn't too far from there. Why does no... May? 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 Ah! May? Yeah. What's wrong? Do you need me to pull over? My head. Okay, well, let's get you home. No, no! Need to talk to everyone tonight. Why? What? All of us. I need all of us. What is happening? Thanks for, like, coming. Again, we live here. <laughs> yeah, you're in that living room. I'll accept the things. So, like, do you have an idea of what's going on? There's a ghost that's in my head. And it can be in her head, though, because Angus saw it. And B saw something. It's so, like these other, like, two out of three of the other characters here have seen something, so it can't be in her head. Angus even described it. Angus is like, it has a coat on, a utility coat, right? And let's say hypothetically, that part was something that may also, like, imagine just, like, not imagined, but, like, was a part of whatever else is going on to where she's getting, like, her dreams mixed up with reality. If that were the case, though, Angus wouldn't have run, have ran. Angus wouldn't have said, I'm going to do this emergency thing and use my inhaler. Like, he had specifically specified earlier on, this is an emergency use thing. He wouldn't have done that if it wasn't an emergency, unless literally this whole thing for a great deal of this, is also inherently, like, this confusion between what is real and not real. But that means, like, we can't trust so much of this. Oh, there's a ghost following me, or I have no idea. I have no idea feels like the most accurate, because, I mean, again, I was just saying earlier, there's a ghost following me. Could we say that? Potentially. 
but i don't think i don't know if it's a ghost or not again like if we're questioning what is real or not is it real is it like a ghost i have no idea but there's a ghost oh. i like how i choose that because i'm like i don't know if it's a ghost or not and then it immediately follows up with it's a ghost and it's after me so are these friends also going to be worried enough about may that they're going to suggest the doctor too I know you guys don't believe me. It's not that I don't believe that something's happening to you. I just don't know that it's a ghost. So that's a good way to specify is like, yes, we believe that something is happening, but we don't know what it is. Like, let's problem solve it and be open to other conclusions. But they did see something. Like, that can't... I don't feel like that should entirely be discounted. Yeah, dude. There are like 50 better explanations for all this. I don't know about better, though. Like, there are alternative explanations. Like what? you have like sudden stress migraines well and migraines can have like some migraines have an aura so like it impacts your your vision i don't know what that would look like but i don't think it would always look like a figure and you saw something that freaked you out and makes you stress out and then that would like feed into a cycle right if you if, you, if hypothetically it was like a, an aura migraine I'm not a doctor can't diagnose this shit but like if it was an aura migraine and she saw something that freaked her out, migraines often have a connection with stress. So then like the stress of that could potentially like, make the migraine worse or keep it going longer. I get migraines and may you've gone through a lot of life changes recently. And I don't know, stress does weird things to people. Okay, fine, fine, whatever. I'm going up into the woods. I know this thing is up there. I know what I saw. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. I'll go alone. That doesn't sound like a great idea. You're really going to hike up past the bas basketball court. It's late, dude. What do you all care? I mean, they care a great deal. They've been helping up until this point. You don't believe me anyway. They don't have to believe 100% to care, though. I'll go. Listen, I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe in you. Oh. Aw, oh, dude. <laughs> so let's go find your ghost. I was fixing to say something like that, but you said it better. Aw, oh, you guys. It's not even ghost hunting season. When is ghost hunting season? Do we have to buy like a permit for a ghost hunting season? Legitimate questions. Yeah, it's Buck. <laughs> We're outlaws. Thank you for believing me. Mostly, I just don't want you wandering around up there alone. That's fair. At night, also fair. Close enough. <laughs> All right. Let's hunt some ghosts. <gasps> Haven't been in a night hike in a long time. Gotta listen to owls. Why? Owls are cool. All right. I got work in the morning. Let's go catch us a ghost. Thoughts, Angus is. I like, I should have been spell psychic. I probably couldn't. But his hat blocks it. Oh, that's adorable. No clues, but Angus saw him too. True. Okay, ghost hunting. I'm not afraid of no ghost. May might be. How have I never been back up here? Fences work. Nah, people are up here all the time. I came here when I was like 12. What's up here? Just old junk and trees and animals. I am actually a bit shocked that Greg didn't bring his crossbow. What is it, B? Nothing. Nothing? I was praying. Oh. Wow. Really? Yeah, let's go. That feels significant. Like, I guess we don't see that that side of her very often. It's almost like... Does that mean that this is meaningful for her kind of a thing? I think it's kind of marching music. Is this a minecart? Wow. Gotta put all this stuff somewhere, I guess. I'm surprised that the, um, 
The person with the side gig wouldn't like sell it off. I'm sure that mining carts would go for some amount of money. If anything, scrap metal. You remember this from when you were 12, Greg? Yeah, I was scared of it. How'd they even get all this back up here? What's up? Nothing? Just like all this old, old stuff out here. It's here every night. You go to sleep. So? It's out here in the dark. So old. So old. So old. So <laughs> it's almost like tisk tisk. Dude! Hey, May! I'm fine! Are you? We should go back. This is stupid. No, it's fine. Ghost hunt! Woo! Fun! May, your face doesn't match the words that you're saying. Okay. Is this a sunrise or a sunset or a campfire? There is something red. I also like how B's um, cigarette stands out. What the? Huh? Oh my god. So you know how the game has mentioned cults an uncanny amount of times? And we have the tooth from our grandfather about the secret society. That's a thing. No, no! Oh, hell, he's awake already. Anyone got any ju ju juice? No, no, guys. Ah, oh, hell. Guys, guys, wait. Lurf? You knew this was going to happen. You knew at the moment you screwed this whole thing up. I didn't like you weren't on the other side of this before. It was a mistake. I owned up to it. Lurf, this is you owning up to it. This sounds like a mobster interaction. Aren't I allowed to make one mistake? Apparently not in a secret society. One mistake? You left a goddamn arm in front of the click clack. Because if you, God knows what's going to happen to this town. What was I supposed to do? It was your screw up. Ugh, his leg's stuck. And it wasn't like you could have called any of us. I panicked, okay? I was embarrassed. Sure wish. I sure wish you would have called me, Lerv. You think any of us want to do this? Guys, we can figure something out. Where did they put this leg? Nothing to figure out. But I got a family, Lerv. Don't insult us. <laughs> you know you don't gotta worry about Jeannie and the girls. They will be completely taken care of. They'll never want for nothing. In this town that's like falling apart? He's not gonna budge with that leg sticking straight out. Oh, is his leg broken? Ah, oh, hell. Dave, Rick, Benny? Guys, you know me. All right, Dave, you hold them. I'm sorry, Lerv. You know we got no choice. I appreciate if you stopped laying a guilt trip on us. No, 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 no. Hold them still. No. <laughs> hold still. This will go easier if. I find that phrase so interesting in these situations because it's almost like make it easier on me like it's not making it easier on them uh, sounds still sound great all right he's free oh is this like caught under that boulder oh it's not anymore Lerv. Uh, Lerv. Ain't no one can hear you this far out until we snap a twig, like the cliche. You're just putting yourself to more anguish and... Text jiggling. I... Oh, hell, let's get this over with. Wish you'd just make this easy, Lerv. Like that. Who, who are you making it easy on? Yourself? You're, it feels like you're saying, make it easy on me. 
Oh god, his bone's sticking out. <laughs> nope. <gasps> nope, don't gasp! The hell? Shit. May! May Borowski! That would have to be the worst time to hear your name ever, so they know you and recognize you. Run! Oh, oh no. Ah, I have to jump. Ah. I mean, at a certain point it feels moot though. Like, they know who you are. They know who your parents are. It's a small town. Like, I'm also not paying attention if they have to jump too, because I'm too busy making sure that I jump. But it feels kind of moot. Like, they know- THEY'RE NOT JUMPING! They would know- they would know where to find you! Like, you're a safe place to kind of not be so safe. I'm sorry, this is a sound that happens when we wake up. Part 4, the end of everything. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this here. Um, it is a cliffhanger, and I am owning that. In this chunk of video, we have we hung out with Angus, and we learned more about Angus's history and Angus's family, and why Greg thinks that they're trash. But also, like how Angus coped with that. As far as, like, why Angus likes to cook. Maybe, like, why Angus is so logical. No, exactly why Angus is so logical. There's this idea of, like, throughout the game, that May has been progressively kind of, like, getting, getting worse. There's been these dreams. And there are these moments where it's like, is it a headache? Migraine? They are different things. Is, is it one of these things? Or is it... These dreams, like a literal lack of sleep, and again, so much of these things can be connected, because if, if we have migraine, it's harder to sleep, and and like how much sleep we get could, for some people, trigger a migraine, and sleep can trigger all of these, or uh, stress can trigger all of these things, too. But May also said that she's been confusing her dreams with reality. So, is there an element of uh, disassociating? Where, like, maybe when reality happens, she thinks it's a dream. Or even, like, then the dreams become reality. And, like, that thing in the car, too, where it's like, whoa, like, what, is, like, what, what's happening here? Um, or potentially even, like, that, th these, like, derealization, like, out-of-body experience type moments. And whenever that kind of is an element in the game, it, it makes it so, especially when, everything is is kind of through the eyes of this character it makes it so it's kind of like okay well how much of what we've experienced was real and how much of it could have been a, another dream kind of a thing like a dreamception a dream within a dream but we did see those articles about like the secret society so at the very end we saw a meeting of these secret society people um was that real or not who knows we ran away from them we didn't see our friends run away too that could just be because of the game right we ran away from them and then like that's that's pretty much it here we are so i'm assuming this is the end of the game i'm really eager to see how everything kind of wraps up i'm also really eager to see if may accepts help because at this point, there's just been this this buildup of, of everybody at this point kind of encouraging me to get help. And she's been insisting that she doesn't really need it. So that's another thing that I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how that plays out. But I would love to hear your thoughts on the game and the videos, and I will see you guys next time.